G'day and welcome back. Today's video is a little bit different and if you watched the intro you would have seen that it's slightly different this week. The chap that set my intro on fire, his name is Graham. He runs a channel called Radio Cruncher. He's in the UK. So I'll just introduce him now. G'day Graham. G'day. That's a great Aussie accent you've got there Graham. Tommy kangaroo down, sport and all that. <laughs> yes, it's well tied down. Um, that's rather strange. Graham has a rather unique channel. He broadcasts live every Sunday at 2 p.m. And he will sit there for a number of hours just repairing a radio and there's a chat. He reads the chats and talks about who's in the chat and what they're talking about. So it's quite a fun idea. I, I initially didn't think it would be any good, but I quite like watching it. And uh, he has a beer and it's an interesting concept. So if you live in the time zone that's you know, maybe six hours either side of 2 p.m., um, just tune in. It's, it's uh, good fun. So I'd like a hands up for all those who are going to see Graham next Sunday. Anyway, enough chit chat. The radio in question was sent to Graham by Jeff Cooper. He lives in Worthing in West Sussex. He sent the radio to Graham. He sent enough money to cover postage to Australia. Jeff was keen to see me do a UK radio, so uh, that's why he's done it. And I just can't thank Jeff enough. What a wonderful gesture. Graham's had a quick look at it and checked it out and he actually got it to work. He's boxed it up and he threw it on a plane and there it goes. it arrived on my doorstep. It's arrived on my bench down under. Oops, I've got the video upside down. Hang on a minute. Okay, that's better. The make is Hacker and it's a Mayflower 2. I assume there was a Mayflower 1. It's quite an unusual name for a radio. And I think the model number is a VR20. It's so much bigger than I thought I can barely get it in camera frame. It's in pretty good condition. The case is pretty much unmarked. Oddly, it's FM only. I'm not sure what year this is. Looks maybe 64 or somewhere around there. I'll have to have a look. I would have thought back in that time AM would still have been, you know, a thing. I believe on the side here is the volume, I think on off switch and volume. On this side is the tuning and the tuning's connected, so that's that's handy. The grill cloth's in good condition. There's a mark on there, grain point. It might be uh, Vegemite, I think. Ugh. That's no, Marmite. Ugh. I'll have to try and get that out. Graham's covered most of this anyway, so I'll turn it around. We'll have a look at the back. Here's the back, and like the case, it's in perfect condition. On the top here, it says Mayflower 2 FM radio receiver. There's the model RV20. And it says Hacker Radio Limited, Cox Green in Maidenhead. Down the bottom here, we've got the FM antenna. It's got a sensitivity control. I don't know what that means. Oh, it doesn't. Uh, it moves. Uh, radio, AFC, Automatic Frequency Control, in or out. So that'll be a three position switch. Yeah, okay. I've never had a radio with AFC. Uh, gram input and radio output. So I guess you can plug it into an amp. Tone controls on the back. Um, I guess they wanted the front clean. I, I guess people don't change that around much. Uh, and then it's got a 15 ohm loudspeaker out. Uh, here's the sticker with the model number and the serial number on it. I can see Graham's packed some stuff in there. I'll take these screws out and then we'll pull the back off. All right, the screws are out. I'll lift the back off. It looks like Graham's taken the valves out. I think he said he was going to do that. Anyway, we'll take this out. I assume there's a, there's a valve. I hope I know where to put them back. I assume that's all the valves. Oh, they're all everywhere. <laughs> there you go. Some in the back there, or is that just packing? Well, this might be just packing. Might be something in that. Something in that. I think that's just packing. Something down here as well. Okay, wow. I have to give Graham top marks for packing. It's been packed beautifully. Um, there's the speaker wires. He disconnected them in his movie. As he pointed out in his video, it's got a um, voltage selector there on top of the transformer. When I watched Graham's video, I thought these were Voloctal valves. I couldn't understand why they had clips on the top, but I think they're no valve, or there's a seven pin there, uh, but the rest look like they're no valve valves, which is good because I don't like Voloctals. Uh, Graham's left these disconnected, which is a nuisance because now I don't know which way they went. 
We've got the red lead on the top. Ah, thanks, Graham. I'll pull the chassis out. We'll get rid of the case to give me a bit more room. Graham showed how to pull it out. There's four bolts on the bottom, and you've got to pull the knobs off either side so that you can get these shafts out. So I'll do that, and I'll come back. I've got the chassis out, and I've unwrapped the valves and just placed them in here. He's luckily numbered them for me, so I don't have to worry about where they go. And as he said, the back is just covered in dust. Otherwise, the chassis is perfect. It's got a hammer tone, green hammer tone. I've actually got paint, I reckon, to be exactly the match for that. But uh, it doesn't need painting, of course. Here's a close-up of the voltage selector, and it goes from 200 to 250. So I'll leave it on 240, 250. I'm sure why that's got red paint on it. Is that a fuse? Yes, I just noticed this has a fuse in it. It's got one pin bigger than the other. I don't know why that would be. Wouldn't matter which way you put a fuse in. I'm assuming the red is the uh, amperage of the fuse. Anyway, as I said, I'll leave it on the 24250. Before we put all the valves in, we'll have a quick look underneath. Here's the bottom, and Graham already looked at all this in depth. Uh, if you've seen his video, you don't need to watch it again, but I'll just go through for people that haven't seen his video. Um, it's all very neat, very neat. There's some new capacitors in here. I think that's one Graham put in. I'll come back to that later. Uh, these are all new. And so are these. These little electrolytics are new as well. The original smoothing capacitor is still connected. That looks like it's got two capacitors in there. The ground will be the shield on the outside. And I can see another one down here. I don't know where that one is. No, that's also electrolytic and looks like there's two capacitors in there too. The red paint gives that away. I can also see a hole there and some fluid coming out. So this is starting to physically leak. So I'm keen to get this running. Um, I will flip it over, put all the valves in and we'll plug it in. Okay, as we saw all the valves are in, I've put an FM antenna on the back. I've plugged it into the uh, dim bulb and the isolated power supply. I've connected the speaker to the shop speaker. I have my multimeter set to DC and it's attached to the coupling capacitor of one of the output valves. The radio is push-pull, so I can only measure one. Uh, hopefully the other one's okay. So that needs to stay at about zero. Graham already tested it. He had it running and he eventually went to full power to get it to work properly. And this is what he got. It's all around. Are filled with video pieces and sound art and paintings and sculptures and installations. Wow! All of which wow! To owe a debt to e so as you can see, he was quite impressed with the way it works. So even though Graham had it on full power, I'm going to start on dim bulb. Let's see what I get. Lamp comes on, dims off. That's good. Uh, the magic eyes in there. Let's just heat it up. Uh, I'll turn it up. See if we've got anything. Mm -hmm. Victory over that Sri Lanka. Oh, that is fun. Being a support worker is more than all around. Contact in Stirling jurisdiction. I think in Queen's. He's a worker, right? This being an earlier UK radio, it only goes to 104. I think they later went to 108. We have stations up to 108. But uh, I think that's um, B104, which is 104.5. So it's not going any further than that. It, that doesn't really worry me. I don't listen to anything up there anyway. I'm not sure there's anything up there. But uh, working all right. I'll just go right down the other end. Make sure it works all the way down. Yeah. It sounds a bit distorted. It's only got 187 volts. I'll put it on full power. It's 230 odd, 233. The uh, magic eyes come up. Let's see if that improves it. Oxley 
successfully store now and save. National Tiles, the largest... list that go, on, sex workers, go through that list that we, we have uh, mentioned there and cut them off and go the correct answer it's on Saturday yeah yeah it's Saturday yeah um, it's an early show so you have to get down there early I love it sounds good um, maybe slightly distorted I'm not quite sure there's a bit of hum there as well that will be fixed if I change these capacitors I don't think the magic eye is doing anything we can just tune it without the volume it's not moving very far at all. I have an idea, these green bars should move all the way back and they're not. It's only just tuning that last little bit there. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. So I think what I'll do next is clean all the dust off here. I need to get a manual. I need to get some information. I, I haven't actually got any information on it. I don't even know when it was made. I, I guessed about 64 before. So I'll, I'll see how close I am. Graham downloaded a manual for it off a, a hacker website and not a hacker's website, but uh, he got the manual for it, so I'll see if I can get that. There's some capacitors in there that need to be changed. Graham said he saw a Hunts capacitor in there. I'll get rid of that. They're not reliable at all. Um, do some checks and maybe check the alignment. I'll see how we go with that. But I'm really happy the way it sounds. It's on my crummy little shop speaker, so it's, it's um, well to sound that good. Anyway, I'll take it out in the workshop and clean this top off. I have the chassis out in the workshop. I will just brush all this dust off, and then I'll probably go around with a bit of alcohol just to clean it up. Now, with the amount of dust on it, we've got enough dust over here. We don't need any more. I'm going to dust it off, collect it, and send it over to Graham. So I've got a bit of paper here. I'm going to try and get, collect as much of this dust as I can. All right, I'll use a small brush, I think. There we go. Oh, look at it all. There it is. There's the first bit, and I goes to the little bit of paper there. So I'll keep going, and when I've finished, we'll come back and have a look. I've dusted it off. It still needs cleaning off, which I'll do in a second, uh, but you should see the dust I got from this. You can't believe it. Look at it. Look how much dust was on there. Anyway, I'm not keeping that. It's not staying in Oz. We're going to send it back to the Northern Hemisphere. Now with all that dust gone, I still need to clean up the chassis. It's got little marks all over it. And I watch videos by Manuel Caldera and he uses a chopstick and half a uh, makeup remover. He cuts it in half. He's split the chopstick. I'm stealing this off him. Not the chopstick, I'm stealing the idea. And fold that into quarter and it just sits in there. Pull it up a bit. He had a spring on his. It seems to be tight enough as it is without the spring, but if it is loose, he had a spring that came up and clamped it. So I have a bit of alcohol here, and there's a bit of dirt there, so we'll see how that works. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good, actually. Try it on here. So there's before, there, and there's after. So there you go, the Caldera Chopstick Mop. Not available in stores. Alright, that's pretty much done. It's come up very nice. It's like new, but it's, it's really good. This is probably one of the cleanest chassis I've ever had. Usually the chassis I get look like they've been stored on a freeway for two years. Uh, this little mop, I showed you before, and of course I was doing big areas here. It's to get into little spots, of course, not, not main areas. I was just showing that it does clean. So yeah, it looks good. It's come up good. So I'll take it inside and we'll do some more work to it. I've filled this envelope with dust from the radio and I'm going to send it back to Graham. I need to start working on the bottom. I'll work out what I'm going to change this capacitor on the end, the filter capacitor. That's got to go. I will restuff that. The selenium rectifier needs to be restuffed. I'll pull that apart, put diodes in there. I'll replace these two coupling capacitors as well. Graham in his video was questioning why there might be wax dripping off the bottom of these resistors. There's a capacitor in here, and it used to be wax coated, um, like these ones here, covered in wax, and the wax is melted off. It's between two resistors there, or three actually, so it may have just got hot enough to melt it off. I don't know. I don't know how the wax got over to that one and not on this one. This one here, which I looked at before and it was leaking a bit, I'm going to change the capacitors in that. I'm going to try and restuff both cans. Uh, now, this one here and this one are electrolytics by the look of them. And one will be the ratio detector, I would think, but I've got no idea what the other one is. 
Those two red capacitors, they piqued my interest. Uh, that's one of them in the ratio detector, as I suspected. The other one is down here somewhere. There it is. And it's in the AFC circuit. So uh, I'll replace both of them. I've been doing some resistor checks and they're not going well. Um, but before I do, I forgot to mention these bypass caps for the cathodes on some of the valves. Uh, they're new electrolytics. I'll leave them in. They're not under a great deal of stress. They should be okay. But I'll, I'll check this one here. This is a MEG. It's brown, black and green. And it's coming up at 1.4 4 MEG. So it's 440K over the what it's supposed to be. Silver band, that's 10%. This one's 8, 2 and a 4, so that's 8, 20. It's coming up at 9, 80. So that would be right on 20%. Once again, it's silver, so it hits a 10%. There's two big ones here. We'll measure them. Uh, 6, 8, 2, so that's 6.8. I think that's going there. Uh, 7, that's not bad. 7K. This one looks the same. It's got a blob of wax on it, which blows my theory out of the water about the other one. Uh, so I don't know where the wax came from. This is going to come up to about 8 by the look of it. So 8.1. Uh, if I went by 20% on 6.8, it would come out to about 8.1, wouldn't it? 12, yeah. Here's the component list. There's the 6.8 I was just looking at. 10% all the way. They're all 10%. So, well, there's two fives there somewhere. There they are. So I think I'll have to change them all. Changing these resistors won't be too bad. They've just stuck through the little tabs on the end of these tab strips or tag strips and just soldered in. So it's only a matter of melting it, pulling the resistor out, putting a new one in. So I think they'll be pretty quick to change. It's not a big job. The first thing I'm going to do is restuff these two capacitors here. I'll just cut these wires off. Both capacitors in this are the same value, so won't really matter um, which which one the wires go to. I'll just keep those two separated and we should be good. And then two Phillips screws on the top and they're out. Pretty unusual having Phillips screws on a radio. I don't get that very often on Australian radios. I'll take the clamps off and go out in the workshop and open them up. I've done a number of these capacitors in the last two or three videos, so I'm not going to get too involved. I'm going to remove this lip here and then take the center out and restuff it. And that's about it. I'll just quickly take it off in the uh, lathe here. And I appreciate a lot of people don't, most people don't have a lathe. Uh, just sand it, uh, file it, whatever you need to just get that rim off if you want to do it this way. Now I could try and expand it back straight, but it'll just crack. There's no way you're going to uncompress aluminium you can compress it all right but not so much going the other way so i'll turn it on and i'll just machine that little ring off i forgot to say i've got it in a live center here so it's holding this stable otherwise it would just collapse and fall apart if you try and grip this and machine that off it'll just bend the case in it's not strong enough so i've got a live center in here to hold it stable that'll be enough. All right, that looks pretty good. It's down to the rubber and it's kind of straight. There might be a little bit of a curve in there, but you expect that. I'll try and lever it out if I can. I'm trying to save this top, but if I don't, it's no big deal. Okay, it's no big deal then. All right, we're not gonna, we're not gonna save that. So I'll just take it out. It's appear to be rubber of some sort. So I'll try some brute force. I'm levering that, I'm trying to lever that on my finger here and not the edge. That's just ripping those out. All right, I'm going to have to get serious. All right, uh, this will be plan B. I'm going to drill a hole in it. I'll take these off. I'll drill a hole through the center and then we should be able to grab it with the pliers. I'll try something different this time. I, I'll Put another hole next to this one and I'll stick my pliers in there and see if it'll just rip out like 
that. Oh, I ripped the top off anyway. Alright, I can get on the edge now, so I should be able to compress it and it'll just come out. There it goes. This is one of the ones that's got potting in it to fill up the gap. Now the last video I did where it had some potting compound in there, I, I got some comments saying heat the case up and these will just slide out. So I should have done that before I took out the main bit there and maybe the whole lot would have come out. Anyway, I've got my heat gun here. I'll just spend a couple minutes heating it up. I'll come back when it's warm. This is pretty jolly warm. Uh, as I said, I should have done this beforehand and yeah. All right. <laughs> Yeah, I should have taken it all out. It's, it's certainly melting that potting compound, but all right, lesson learned. Next time I'll heat it up. Uh, most of the ones I've ever done haven't had the black potting compound in there. It's melted now, so I'll use this. I'll just scrape it out, I think. Okay, that's about all I'm going to get out of that. Um, it's still got a film inside and last time I just put some acetone in there and left it overnight and then I wiped it out with the rag, it came out alright. So what I'm going to do is do this one off camera. I'll get it all ready, heat it up and see if it actually pulls out like they say. I've taken the ring off, I've drilled two holes in it, I've got my pliers in there and I've heated it up. So we'll see how it slips out. As uh, I think it was Steve from New Zealand uh, was one of the people that suggested it. Yeah, the problem is I can't hang on to it. Yeah. yeah, I can't hang on to it. <laughs> Yikes. Here's a rag. <clears throat> well, that didn't quite just slip out. Um, I'll get this out first, this top bit. Right, I'm going to try again. It's cooled off a bit now. But the uh, I've drilled another hole in it. Yeah, it's really just not it's still warm enough. It's just not coming out. I think it's coming now. There it goes. Oh. I might be winding it the wrong way. I'm trying to unwind it in the in the cylinder there. Yeah. Alright, well, I don't think heating it did much to this one anyway. It might work other ones. I've, I've split the aluminium there, if you can see it. Ugh. It's a disaster. I'll clean these out. We'll go inside and I'll put some new capacitors in it. I'm back inside and ready to restuff this capacitor. As you can see, it's cleaned up perfectly in there. I ended up using some acrylic lacquer thinner and it came out very, very quickly. So they're perfectly clean. Now I printed a little cap to go in there and it's got three holes in it. And I'm just going to try something new. I have these little tabs that I'm going to use. And these are off a tab strip or a tag strip, whichever you want to call it. And you just um, peel them back with a pair of side cutters. So it's just a matter of getting in here with the side cutters, just pulling these little bent over bits back straight, and then it pulls through. So I drilled a three and a half millimeter hole, and they just poke through the other side. I'll go that way. And I've got a center punch there, and I'm just going to spread the, there, spread the little tabs over. So there you go. There it is, that's come up very nice. I can now, um, when I put the other two on, I'll bend this up again and we'll have a right angle and it's got a hole in the middle and I can just run the wires from the back through and sold them onto the tab. Here's one I've prepared earlier and it's ready to go back together. I've put some information on it, cut some little slots in case it wants to blow, let it get out. Uh, it'll just blow the top off anyway, so, uh, but that came up pretty good. So I'm happy with that plan. So I'll go and fit these other two, bend them up, put this all together, and then I'll round off the edges. If you haven't seen me do this before, all I've got is two very hard bits of timber there, and all I do is rotate it and try and push that edge in. There is not a lot left on this edge here at all, but it'll be enough to hold it. So I'll give it a go. I'm pushing pretty hard on this. Right, that'll do it. Uh, you can see there it's, it's rounded over the top there. These won't come out again. So uh, that'll have to do. As I said, not a lot of lip there, so not as good as normal, but uh, good enough. So I'll finish this one off as well. I'll remount them both and we'll see if the radio works. Uh, something I did change, 
Uh, on the second one, I did. I just poked the wire through, bent it over, and then soldered it down there. Much neater. Uh, this one's a bit messy, so it's got the wire wrapped around it. So this is much better. Yeah, it's good. I've put both capacitors back, wired them in, and I've checked everything. It should be okay. Uh, I've got this on dim bulb, so I will just leave it there, just in case. But the globe's working all right. Uh, I'm still connected to the shop speaker here. I've got an antenna in the back. I've put a knob on there, I couldn't turn it, um, so, oh, it's not working, might be a bit low in voltage, there's nothing there, mm, seems alright, 32, that's what it was before, about 50, 51 I think it was before, alright, so that should work, oh, Hey, that doesn't work either. The, the magic guy is working. It's tuning a station in. It's not coming out. Amp's working. What's going on? Uh, the magic guy has taken off this, so the signal must be up to here somewhere. And it's there. So... going on? Speakers are on. I can hear a small hum. I've just sat here for a second thinking about it. That's working. That's tuning a station. So it's getting decoded by this diode here, or double diode. That's working. So anything between those two is the FM detector. Uh, hang on, I'll turn it off. We better see what's going on underneath. I've checked out my capacitors. There's nothing wrong with them. All I cut was these three wires here and these three wires here. I've added a ground to each one uh, and that's it. So, um, you know, it's not that hard. So there's nothing wrong with what I've done. This has happened by itself, I think. So I'll put power on again. It's all warmed up now. I can hear a hum in the speaker. There's a switch here that you can see the side of. This is the AFC and gram. So if I put the gram, yeah, it hums already. Uh, this is the gram. If I touch it, yeah, it's okay. So I know that's working. So I know the amplifier is working. I'm just watching the magic eye now. I can tune in. So we are tuned into a station. Uh, that magic eye comes off the diodes or the ratio detector. So I'm not sure now. Uh, I've got a little tracer here, signal tracer. Let's see if we can find us. No. Now, this is handy. There's blue wires there, and that's the signal path, so that makes it easy. Nothing there. I've just made a little coil up to put on it. It probably would work without the coil. This may even be him doing it. Actually, I'll, I'll take that little coil off. Oh, that might help. So it seems to be there, but it's not there in any appreciable strength. I've attached the probe ground to the chassis. It might clean it up a bit. Now the signal is there, that's the diode there, the bottom of it. I've taken a little coil off my probe and I've grounded the probe to the chassis here. Now these, this side here is low voltage so I can put my probe on here, I wouldn't put it on a plate. Uh, so we should be able to hear something. Whoa. Turn that down a little. The square there it is there. So... As a house. There's the two secondaries. So that's the secondary going into the diode. That uh, There's a diode facing opposite ways. They go through that diode. So the sound is there in the center tap or the second or the third coil. So it should be up here. It's there, I'll turn that up. It's just coming through there. All right, um, now there's a wire around here, a white one. This white wire is coming around here, and where is it? There it is there. So it should be there. 
for in that is. the reason. All right, so that's the switch that changes from radio to, to gram. I'll try something, this might be a bit dangerous. No, no, that's not it. No, it's got to go that way. Got a clip lead here. I'll clip it on there. Turn it up, maybe. Ah, there it is. He's coming up a little while, plus some new music from Harry Styles. So it must be that switch. I'll just run through that. I was sort of doing it by myself. I should have been telling you what was going on. This here is the Graham input and it has a switch. On this model, this isn't my quite my model. Mine's a bit later, apparently. Uh, when you push the plug into the Graham, it would disconnect the radio from here. The signal's coming through here. Disconnect it from here and attach it to this line here, which is volume control, tone control, and it goes off to the grids. So mine's got a three position switch and there's another switch here for the AF, there it is there, for the AFC. So I think on this model, sorry, on the earlier model, this had a switch and then an automatic one for the gram and that would work. So what was going on was I was able to select gram, put my finger here, it would go through the volume control off to the grid and the amp would work. I was also able to follow the signal path which goes through these coils here into this grid into that coil and that's the the primary that was the one I was looking at the most with my sniffer I took off the little coil and went direct onto here those were the two little secondaries there's that center tap that went through a, a resistor there I followed the signal here and pretty much up to here that was the white wire that went up to the switch now I kind of worked now I figured this was all working because here's the magic eye, uh, where's its grid, there it is. It comes back through here and it gets it off this ratio detector. So there it is there, Th there's the output from the ratio detector and it's, right, it's coming up to the grid there. So that was all working, I knew that was working, I knew from here was working, so uh, yeah I guess logically it was that switch all the time, which is actually a slide switch. So I'm going to pull the switch out and we'll have a look at that. I've got the power off here. Here's the switch. Um, I'm going to try and do it in situ. I think there'll be springs going everywhere. Uh, these will come off with the screwdriver. This one's grounded so I'll have to take the nut and bolt out. I've taken that out so that's free now. Should be able to flip this up. I'll cut that out of the way. There's our contacts. There it is, and I was mistaken. It actually goes that way, which is what I initially thought. Then I convinced myself it actually crossed that way and shorted them that way. Nope, it goes there, one position, two, three positions. So me connecting those two together got the signal through. So something's not um, connecting somewhere. So that should have connected to that. Signal in. I wonder if the signal's actually coming this way and going out that way. Welcome to another episode of Dumbass Diaries. I had this in the back of my mind the whole time. This wire is not carrying the signal. It is carrying the signal back to the FM module for the AFC. So the bottom part of that switch is the AFC. So over here it's on AFC on. Here it grounds it. This black wire goes back to ground. So that was carrying a signal, but not the one we wanted. So then I followed this switch back and came back here. And this wire here, this green wire, is the one that's coming out of the ratio detector. So I followed that up, goes across here, and then I saw this. This is the ground wire I put on for my new capacitor. And I was originally going to go over here with it. But there was a screw here, so I thought I'd put it on here. If I lift this little capacitor up, you can probably see. This is the crimp terminal I used. There's the screw I'm using to hold it down. I'm pretty sure that terminal is hitting one of these tabs here. I think if I loosen that, turn it slightly, the radio will work. I'll put the power on, we'll see if it works. <laughs> I've reassembled the switch. I'll turn it over, we'll turn this on. All right, I think we're set up. I'll put the power on again. This will work for sure. There it is. 
Cats required to be registered via an online smartphone and with an expansion of cat containment laws for all cats born after July 1. Nikki Elliott, Air News. Finally, for the Australian share market, the S&P 200 has finished the day up 4.10 points at 6,606.3. It's working again, thank goodness. Uh, it only took me 30 minutes. It wasn't a big loss, but, you know, it shouldn't have happened. I should have been more careful. So with that working now, I can move on to the next part, I think, which will be some of the capacitors. If you enjoyed watching me struggle, I hope you can join me next week for another episode of Dumbass Diaries. One thing I forgot to mention, when I was using the sniffer to trace the FM signal, if the ratio detector wasn't working, I doubt very much I would have picked up that FM signal. So I was confident the ratio detector was working. I'm going to call this the end of part one. The video went longer than I anticipated, so I've cut it into two. And part two will be Friday, the same time next week. I didn't do too badly this week. The radio works and uh, it looks good. It's uh, in good condition. I have the chassis a good clean and it looks like new. I'm very happy with it. Speaking of cleaning, I wonder if that dust arrived back at Graham's place. Oh, yikes. Um, okay, well, I'm going to go. Um, next week, I'm going to do some capacitors, do an alignment and clean up the case. And once again, a big thanks to Graham for organising this. And many, many thanks to Jeff for sending this radio over. Good on you, Jeff. So I hope you enjoyed watching me do this this week, and I hope you can join me next week for my next Hacker Radio Adventure. <laughs>